take some pictures. While I'm up there, can you take some pictures? So, Diane Anthony, did you see how that was done? <laughs> and on that note, welcome to the Guilford Community Church. If you are seated near the center of the aisle, please sign our registration book. And if you're watching on Facebook, let us know that you're doing so and consider liking the service. Immediately following our service, please join us downstairs in our fellowship hall for coffee hour. This morning's coffee hour is hosted by our wonderful diaconate, and I believe that Amber has a number of announcements to make. Yes, I do. Well, welcome to Rally Day. Um, this is the week of our, uh, we open Sunday school, and I'm so happy to be back and seeing all the kids here. I do have a few announcements. The first one is I still am in need of volunteers for the Reach the Beach. Um, this is next Friday and Saturday, but the timing is overnight. So what happens with this race is that people run through the night, um, and it's 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., um, the best thing about this is that if I get a lot of volunteers, then I will get, um, or the church will get a nice uh, check for about $1,500 that we can put towards our mission trip. So if you are available, I know it's late in the night, but if you are available, I will be downstairs um, and you can sign up for a time slot. The second thing, um, I have changed my weekly events. They're not going to be just youth events. One of my goals this year is to have everyone involved with them. So I've put them out um, as the Guilford Community Church events, and I hope that I have a variety of ages attend all of these different things. And my last announcement is, this is also a special day. It's Grandparents Day. So I would like for all the grandparents in our congregation to please stand up and to receive a round of applause. We are so, if you could remain standing, we're so lucky to have so many wonderful people um, and you grandparents are just amazing in our congregation and I want to share a little prayer for you. It's called Grandparents Day Prayer. Lord God Almighty, bless our grandparents with long life, happiness, and health. May they remain constant in our love and be living signs of your presence to our children and their grandchildren. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy Grandparents Day, everyone. Thank you, Amber. And now just take a moment to reflect on why we've gathered here today.
Hey God, it's me. I hate to be a bother, but I could use a minute or two. Yeah, I'm just so heartbroken, disappointed in the way this world is coming unglued. And I can't help but wonder, are you? If you've got a little love left in your back pocket, rain it down like pennies in this wishing well of tears. I know that you're busy, but if you could hear me talking, we could use a little more heaven down here. We could use a little more heaven down here. We could use, we could use, we could use a little more heaven. We could use, we could use, we could use a little more heaven. Hey God, I know. I don't hit you up that often, but the world is turning upside down. I swear it feels like all we've got is problems, and there's so many that I'm losing count. If you've got a little love left in your back pocket, rain it down like pennies in this wishing well of tears. I know that you're busy, but if you could hear me talking, we could use a little more heaven down here. We could use a little more heaven down here. We could use, we could use, we could use a little more heaven. We could use, we could use, we could use a little more heaven. Hey God, it's me. We're really going through it, and I can't help but wonder, are you? If you've got a little love left in your back pocket, rain it down like pennies in this wishing well of tears. I know that you're busy, but if you could hear me talking, we could use a little more heaven down here. We could use a little more heaven down here. Thank you, ladies and AJ. That was a beautiful way to start our service. Please stand and join with me in our call to worship. When we stand at the edge of fear and worry, when we stand at the edge of the world's pain and need, when we stand at the edge of our hunger and thirst, and then remain standing as we sing together hymn number 21, God reigns o'er all the earth.
be seated and join me in a word of prayer. We've gathered today on this beautiful morning to this place and in this time. We come not seeking majestic answers to great questions, but simply grateful for the gift of this time together. A time when we can catch our breath, listen to the rhythms of our lives. Like ancient tribes of old, we gather in the village center around a flame of ideals with an urge to recenter our lives, to be set free from the undones of our ambitious to-do list. In this reflective space among friends, may we set aside the worries and hurries that will be rendered unimportant in the rapids of time so that we may be a community that is whole, vibrant, and always loving. We pray this even as we remember an ancient prayer that Jesus taught, a prayer that began, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's reading is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7, verses 24 through 37. Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it, yet he could not keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an impure spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek born in Syrian Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. First, let the children eat all they want, he told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he told her, for such a reply you may go. The demon has left your daughter. She went home and found her daughter lying on the bed and the demon gone. Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon, down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of Decapolis. There, some people brought to him a man who was deaf and who could hardly talk, and they begged Jesus to place his hand on him. After he took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spit and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Ephatha, which means be opened. At this, the man's ears were opened, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone, but the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. Here ends today's reading.
Thank you, choir. That was wonderful. All right, as I stand here before you, I am so thankful to be able to share with you the 2021 Community, One Community Project. This was a wonderful event that brought adults and children in our community together. Over the course of the four days, we scraped and painted the Parsonage building right out front, and we built a brand new gatekeeper hut for the Guilford Town Beach. We are so proud of what we were able to accomplish in those four days. I have to mention that we had incredible sponsors this year, including Sherwin-Williams, who donated all the paint and supplies, Walmart, and Bank of New Hampshire. Our sponsors donated over $2,500 to us. None of this would have been possible without, without our committee members, who are Tom Meyer Jurgen, Carolyn Druin, Al Rollins, Donna Snow, and Michael Graham. The committee met monthly starting in January to organize and plan for these projects. And I can't thank them enough for their time, dedication, and expertise. Now I was gonna show you a video, but the projector is not working this morning. So, I will send it to Melissa. She will put it on the weekly bulletin. Um, but if the projector works next week, I'll show it to you next week. Um, because it was an amazing project, and it's fun to watch the timeline of it all. But if you have a chance, watch it um, on your own this week. Now, could I have the children come forward? And you'll share your time with me. Come on over. And while they're coming forward, if everyone could locate their um, children's litany or the rally day litany while they're doing that, that would be great. And it should be right in your bulletin. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm so happy to see. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> So happy to see you. Kason, if you want to sit right back there on the, you can if you want to, yeah. Um, I'm so happy to see all of you. How's school going? Good answer. Good answer. What's some fun things that you've done already in school? Kason? Phys ed class with me. Yeah, phys ed class. Thank you, Kason. What else? Recess, okay, I'm seeing a trend. Re is lunch fun? Okay, good. How about your other classes? Yeah? Math, okay, good. Math, and you get to know your teachers, new teachers this year, and I bet there's even some new, maybe, classmates. And I know Henry and Douglas started kindergarten this year. Dale, did anybody else start kindergarten? You started kindergarten too? Awesome. It's so exciting to start the new year. Now, um, we are all going to, Michael's going to lead us in our rally day litany, and there's different pieces to it. So um, again, when it says congregation or the parents, just try to keep up, okay? All right. Are we ready? We're ready, but oh, oh I forgot to, the kids have a part too. So if you can pass. One out. So again, all is everyone. I'm the worship <laughs> leader. Congregation is everyone but me. 
parents of children and youth, I think you know who you are. Children and youth, teachers, other adults, congregation, worship leader, all. Let's try it. We're going to try it. We've done this 10 years, and we've not got it right once. So let's, <laughs> fingers, fingers crossed. So all, we come together as a living church. We come together from different places as unique individuals. Our paths and the ways of our going are diverse, yet we share our journey. We come together in gladness, knowing here we're here. I am glad to bring my children to this church, which is for us a larger family. Here we come to understand that we are all part of an even larger family of life on earth, which is our home. In our church, we can discover what it means to be related. I am glad I have the opportunity to work and play and learn with the youngest people in our church. Your questions invite my wonder. Your trust encourages my hope. So I will strive to give each of you the kind of affection and respect which fosters your ability to question and to trust. We all rejoice in the children and youth who are with us on life's journey as we cherish you we pledge ourselves to share with you the living wisdom of our religious tradition, which is your heritage. We welcome you into our fellowship. As you grow, we hope to find you beside us in the long and loving work of creating goodness in the world. As children of one creative spirit, we affirm our relationship to the larger family of life. We affirm our faith that we have within us the power and wisdom to join in the creation of a world of justice, peace, and joy. Let us strive to understand ourselves and one another and to extend the spirit of goodwill as far as our love can reach. Amen. I, Not bad. I think that was the best one yet. <laughs> yeah. We're doing better. So, April, could you do me a favor and collect all these from the kids right now? And while she is doing that, I want to talk to you about what happened last year. Last year, each month, we focused on a specific word. Does anybody remember what that word is? Community. And that was our focus. And we did some fun activities together. Can you remember what we did with the congregation, some of them? Yep. We made the rocks. Yep, we painted rocks. Does anybody else remember what we did? Any other member? We had some pen pals. We did our kindness, our heart kindness poster downstairs. We did our thumbprints. Do you remember that? We did our thumbprints. Well, this year, I'm excited to share with everyone that our word, that our monthly word is going to be connections. Okay? I need your help with something. I would like for you guys to stand in a line right here, but I need some people back there as well. And we're going to try something. I have no idea if it's actually going to work. So could you guys stand in a line right here? And I'm going to have, Landon, you're going to hold this. And this string, you're going to stay right there. You're going to face the congregation. This string is going to be passed. This is hell. <laughs> this string's going to be passed all the way back. So could you pass it all the way back? And just if you're near it, just hold on to it. And we're going to do one on this side of the congregation as well. So April. Can you take that? And we're going to pass it back. And pass it all the way back. And then I need four 
Addie and Genevieve, could you go to the back? And you're going to be the connection in the back. So keep it going all the way to the back. All right. Actually, we should... Did we make it? And then you guys, Melody, you're going to hold that. You're going to go all the way down, pass it all the way down till we get to Landon. Are we there in the back? Have we connected? Not yet. Pass it all the way down. And then right to me. And hold on to it. We're almost there. I see that the right side's a little quicker than the left side. <laughs> they did start before us, yes. <laughs> So we have built our first connection together. We can make connections with each other. We can connect with our faith. We can connect with our environment and many, many more. There's a variety of ways we can connect as humans. Each month, we will continue to have special projects that we hope you take part in. Our first activity is called Getting to Know You, Getting to Know All About You. I was going to sing that one, but... I thought, not yet. Each Sunday, okay, so this is the month of September. Each Sunday during coffee hour, you have to find, or we hope, you find one special person to talk to and make a connection and fill out this sheet right here. And it says, getting to know you. If you talk to that one person and get to know them, fold it up and hand it to me. Each week, you have the opportunity to do this. And if you do it and hand it to me, there will be some raffle prizes next time I do. A little incentive for you. Um, next time I do Children's Day. But it's all about connections this year. Connections with kids, connections with adults, connections with each other. So I hope you take part in some of the activities and have as much fun as we are going to have this year and during Sunday school. All right. So we can head back down. And I don't know. I didn't plan on this one. <laughs> so um, let's see. I guess just drop it. And Genevieve and Addie, can you just roll it together? And the rest of us, we can head back downstairs. Let's head on down and maybe some background music, Dan, while we're rolling it up. It was good until I... There's an elevator.
Thank you, AJ and Dan. That was really nice. As we take a moment to be reflective, I would ask you to hold in your hearts the, all of you heard about the Laconia police officer who was intentionally run over. He's had successful, successful surgery. He's actually um, Susan Brown's daughter's boyfriend, and it looks like he'll be out of work for at least four months, so I'd ask you to keep that family in your thoughts and prayers, as well as our grandson Jack, six-year-old Jack's had surgery on his ear this past week. So let us be in a spirit of prayer. We grow quiet. Trying to still our minds. To open our hearts. We pause to think of people near and far away. For whom this might not have been a good week people who lost loved ones, people who heard their surgeon say there's nothing else we can do, families whose children were gunned down in a school killing again, teachers who took bullets so their children wouldn't. Despite all of those things, we do believe there is a spirit at work in our world luring us and moving us to work for good. It works through human hands, but it was not made by human hands. It is a creative, sustaining, empowering presence. And we can trust it with our lives. It will sustain us whenever we take a stand on the side of love. Whenever we take a stand for peace and justice. Whenever we discover courage and take a risk. We trust in that power. And we know that together we are held by that power. May we continue to give our lives to it as we work for good in our world. Amen. And now please stand as we sing hymn number 547, Amazing Grace.
Reverend Graham, I'd like you to meet my father and my mother. Daniel pointed to the two of them just getting out of their car. We walked toward them. Now, for months, Daniel had warned me, my father can be rather difficult, a real jerk at times. When he told me that, I told him, I've worked in the church for three decades. I've worked with a lot of tough people. I thought I was prepared. Now, Daniel made the introductions. Reverend Graham, this is my father, Ari, my mother, Rachel. Big smile filled Rachel's face. She shook my hand. I tried to shake Ari's hand. He just looked at it like he was inspecting something. And then he glared at his son. And then he barked, Daniel. That was the only word I really understood. They spoke in Hebrew for the next two minutes. I can read Hebrew, but I couldn't keep up with what they were saying. But Ari continued to shake his head and let out sighs of anguish. Finally, he turned away and walked away. And as he did, Rachel scampered after him saying, it'll be okay, don't worry. Daniel apologized, I'm so sorry. My father was expecting a rabbi. Daniel's mom and dad had just arrived from Israel. That's where Daniel grew up. Now he lived in Scotland. He was a graduate student at St. Andrews. And, but Daniel was really, he'd become a citizen of the world. He lived in the States for a while, for, in Germany for a while, in Scotland. And his faith had really grown much larger than the faith he grew up with. And his fiancée, Amy, lived right here in Guilford. Unlike Daniel's family, Amy's family was not religious at all. A justice of the peace would have been just fine for them. And when they went to church, Amy said they went to any church that wasn't Catholic. That's how she put it, anything but Catholic. I met the two of them about a year earlier. When Daniel called to meet with me, he said, I looked at your website. I think you might be able to read Hebrew. That would help. My family is Jewish, and if you could sprinkle some Hebrew into our wedding, I think that might work. And so over the past year, we met a number of times. I knew his dad was a devout, conservative Jew. And at one point, I said, why don't you just get a rabbi? He'll charge you more, but it'll make your dad happy. But Amy didn't want a rabbi. She could live with incorporating a few Jewish elements into the service, but nothing really religious, she said. Now, I worked hard to make the service something that they would really like. I watched Jewish weddings online, watched a couple of movies about Jewish weddings, and we emailed back and forth, and I thought Daniel had told his father before we met that I was a goyim, but he hadn't. Now it was time for the rehearsal to start. I called everyone together. This was up at Steel Hill. We, we talked through the service first. Everyone got in order. And, but almost every time I attempted to do something, Daniel's father interrupted me and said, that's not how we do it. I left finally frustrated. The day of the wedding came and it was raining and I knew I would be held accountable for that. (laughs) About midway through the service, I happened to make eye contact with Daniel's father. He was crying. His eyes were wet with tears and when the service was over, he approached and apologized and said, Reverend Graham, I'm so sorry. I'm embarrassed at how I have treated you. My tradition teaches me to welcome the stranger, and I didn't do that. I said, don't worry, no big deal. I'll work it into a sermon, and everything will be fine. (laughs) We shook hands, and then he kissed me on the left cheek and the right cheek. And he said, come, let's have a drink together. 
As I read the gospel reading this morning that Brenda did such a great job reading for us, I couldn't help but think about that Canaanite woman. I was being rejected and mistreated because of who I was, a Christian minister. I don't think I have ever experienced such hostility. And every single time I get a little worked up when I read this gospel passage, and it ought to bother you, I don't know how Jesus could treat the lady the way she di he did. His words embarrass me. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter, and he said, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Can you imagine saying that to anyone? But then I think, you know, religion too often does that. It creates distance between people, us and them. And the funny thing is, it's always easier to see the prejudice in other people than it is to see it in ourselves. Some time ago, our daughter Katie visited, and we were on a walk through our neighborhood, and I said something about someone. And in a very loving way, she reminded me that I can be a judgmental jerk sometimes <laughs> about certain people. She mentioned two adjectives I frequently label people with. And once we label people, they become less than human and easy to dismiss, easy to demonize. This is a prejudice I learned from my parents. And when I saw it in them, it bothered me. Yet I was completely blind to seeing it in myself. In a recent book, the Dalai Lama wonders if the world wouldn't be better with less religion. Maybe we don't need less religion, maybe we just need less bad religion. This morning, I read this beautiful quote. Good religion is always about seeing rightly how we see and what we see is able to how we see is what we see. How we see is what we see, and to see rightly is to be able to be fully present without fear, without bias, and without judgment. That's how we're supposed to see. That's what good religion helps us do. Now, Jesus, like all of us, inherited a cultural map. It was clearly conflicted. There was one voice in that tradition that says we need to welcome the strangers because we once were strangers. But the louder voice declared that foreigners were bad people. They aren't the chosen. They aren't us. And Ari inherited that map. A lot of us do. But thankfully, we are, and Jesus was capable of changing, of seeing the world differently. And that's exactly what happens in this passage. Jesus is changed. He grows. He becomes a better person. And what triggers this growth? I think it's the voice of the Canaanite woman. But even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. I think Jesus heard those words and his heart was pierced and it was tenderized. Even the dogs. Certainly he must have thought to himself, oh my gosh, what am I doing labeling this person that way? I'm reminded of an old story. There once was an old reprobate, kind of a mix of Dennis and Rich Milligan. And he, like them, lived a wild and loose life. Too much in love with the bottle and gambling. And when he died, the minister, who was somewhat of a tyrant, insisted the man be buried outside the fence of the church cemetery. For the consecrated ground inside the fence was only for good and upstanding Christians. Years later, when the minister was gone, the man's daughter came to visit her father's gravesite. She went right to the spot where it was, but she couldn't find it. She looked all over. 
Frustrated, she found the cemetery caretaker and asked her, what in the world has happened to my father's grave? She pointed to the, beyond the fence where the grave was, where it should have been, and the caretaker smiled. He took the daughter's hand and led her to a grave inside the fence. But she was a little ticked off. She said, why did you move my father's grave? He smiled and said, we didn't move his grave, we moved the fence. In this divisive moment, when too many of us are quick to demonize others, to call them stupid, to quickly form our tribes, let's do what the caretaker did. Let's move the fence so that no one, no one is excluded. Amen. And now please stand as we close this service singing hymn number 173, You Have Come Down to the Lakeshore. And now, having gathered together for worship, may we go forth with a great sense of joy, purpose, and peace as we move those fences and aspire to make love visible in our world. Amen.